do we have the ability or the prerogative or the obligation as part of God's creation, offspring or children of God, either one, to question him, his son Jesus Christ, or his Holy Spirit regarding the truth or authenticity of their word, the Bible, their existence, or their authority in this world. <coughs> and the question is, do we have the right to the question? No, right. do, I'm not using the word right. I'm using the ability or the prerogative oh, okay. or the obligation. Then I would say yes, absolutely. Okay. That's how we learn. Mm -hmm. That's okay. how we get introduced. Here's, here's what I say. Good. I say yes if we are still his offspring and pre-believers because you have to know and you have to make certain in your own mind that what you believe and what you're going to commit to is actually what you want to live by the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So yes, you do have you do have, a, have, have the prerogative and have the ability and, and the obligation actually to, to question him and his word and everything else just like you have any other uh, religion, which is going to come to a dead end when you compare it with, uh, with, uh, with the Bible and with God's Word. But I say no if we are believers, already believers, and accepted as children of God. And then you have to do what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, which is, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So we have to, our faith has to be strong, steady in our belief 100% with, without a doubt once we've reached that point as a believer and of course the uh, uh, I'll go on for the, with the next uh, paragraph and, uh, we, and there's some other questions here in this other paragraph that uh, you might want to look up to but uh, but do you think that the second Corinthians 5 7 is a good description of uh, what a believer needs to do? Yeah. Especially if you take it in context to see what he's talking about. Yeah. What a life and death mm -hmm. issue and saying that our faith is bigger than life and death. Yeah. Whether we live or whether we die, it's our faith mm -hmm. that keeps us on tethered. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll go on. Some say that the question or to satisfy our mind or verify our own satisfaction is our free will choice or gift. Because you know free will is a gift. And, uh, and we have to come to that position where we do make that choice of whether we say, yes, I do accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in my heart. 100% for sure. Not that you're gonna fall, not fall off the path on occasion, which a lot of people do, some don't. Uh, but you still, have to, you still have that choice you have to make, but it has to be without a doubt when you make that choice. Others don't believe in creation by God or anything else. They just have no belief system, whatever, period. They don't believe in anything or anybody. And they never question or they see or seek answers about anything. Some people are like that. Mm -hmm. They just live life day by day, minute by minute, and don't worry about anything or anybody or any, you know what I mean? It's all about them, all involves self. You get in a lot of trouble sometimes when you ask a lot of questions. Pardon me? You get in a lot of trouble sometimes when you ask questions. Well, it makes you think. When you ask questions, it means you're thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other people don't like you asking questions. Well, okay. That's true. Still other people believe in the scientific evolution theory that we evolved into human beings over millions of years and that when we die, that is the end of life, period. We're dead, we put us in the ground, we turn to dust. That's it. You're such a lovely amoeba. You know? <laughs> Pardon me? We all turn to dust? Yes. Well, Not all of us. You know, when Jesus comes back, we're all going to be raised up. That's right. The dead ones With a glorified body. body. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get sick no more. Don't yeah, get right. injured no more. Exactly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Many people believe that anyone who believes in creation theory are slaves that are held in bondage of religion. A lot of people believe that. They yeah. believe that when we, that there is no freedom, with with relationship with God, yeah. there is. That's not freedom. That's not a freedom to a lot of people because they've never experienced that. They never experienced it, real freedom. I think it was Einstein who said it takes more faith to believe in creationism than it does. I mean, excuse me, 
in uh, evolution. evolution than it does creationism. Mm. Because you have to believe in things that are, there is absolutely no scientific evidence of. Yeah. There is no evidence of evolution mm -hmm. except for a theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a theory. It's a theory. Yeah. Because but, in my opinion, uh, knowing that God created time, He created time for us, and, there, and to, to God there is no time, there never was a time, this creation process of His could have taken billions of years. We don't know. Well, the fact is the universe is devolving. It's yeah. not evolving. Yeah. It breaks down. Everything is breaking down slowly. It's, it's this, you know, it's becoming less and less, not more and more. It doesn't evolve into something bigger and better or we'd have nothing but intelligent yeah. life forms on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear Brian too. I can't hear either one of you. Can. You can't I, hear us? No, my ears are gone. It must be going. No, we just need to get them cleaned out. <laughs> I don't need to start over, do I? No, no, no. I don't need to start over. But it was very, you know, okay. light, so I want to hear it deeply. Okay, this is my opinion now. I believe that we, as Christians, and I consider us Christians, followers of Jesus Christ and His teachings, that's what a Christian is. Amen. We have an obligation to defend our beliefs by displaying our faith, where everybody can see it. Yes. And this requires us to give testimonies that demonstrates the evidence that through science, miracles, and wonders, we can and should call these practical manifestations, right? Yes. Because our testimonies are evidence of science, miracles, and wonders. Yes. They are. Just like his. He can say he was healed. Many of you can say you were healed miraculously. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. And signs and wonders are right in that same category, right along with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the title of this, uh, this, be this message today is Practical Manifestations in Our Christian Walk, Within Our Christian Walk. And I'll get, I'll get into that too. So we have John 1 John 5, 6 through 12. It's a long one, but I like to, I like to cover a little before and a little bit after the main focus so that we can, have, we can see the context of of the uh, of the particular verse that I'm interested First in. First John five, did you say? First John five yes. six through twelve. Five, and the six. next one after that will be James two fourteen through twenty five. After I do a paragraph in between. So whenever what whoever's got John. I'm taking James two what? Terry Sue's got. Uh oh. James two. You beat me on Terry Sue. James two fourteen through twenty five is the one after this one. That's right. So whoever has. 1 John 5, 6 through 12, go ahead. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is true. There, uh, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Wait. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Amen. He who has the Son has life. Yes. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Right. And that's, to me, that's the ultimate testimony. Now, we, uh, in my uh, description here, we use the word testimony up where you were using witness. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and I like verse 9 that says, We accept human testimony, which is yours, mine, and everybody else's. But God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which He has given about His Son. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
And uh, I always say that uh, when, mm. when, when people, and I used to do this too, I don't have a great, fantastic testimony to give. You know, mine's just a slow, even progression over the years. And, uh, but, uh, but I know there's a... Uh, <laughs> Not everybody I'm sorry. With you. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. but you are a completely new man from the one I met yeah. six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You are awesome, yeah. and God has changed you in mighty and wonderful ways. That's true. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I know there's people that say, oh, I, don't have any, I don't have any great testimony to give about this and that. But you know what? Just like it says here, we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is great. And if you've got the testimony of Jesus Christ on your lips, yes. that's all you need, really. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really all you need, because that's what people are going to believe. Although your testimony does kind of lead them in that direction, for sure. Right. Okay. There was a word, of, the word witness, uh -huh. uh, which also in yours is, comes out testimony. Uh -huh. The word in the uh, Greek is maturia, or maturia is how it's really, mm. but you know, it just makes me think, you know, that's a mature maturity. attitude, uh -huh. you know, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's already coming up. the witness, the testimony, the way to mature is to not only give, but receive testimony. Absolutely. Give and receive, right? right. Yeah. I believe it. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, I know we're all fairly well versed here in what everything means, but I like to throw that in because this message will be going a lot of places where people don't understand every word. So uh, I like to give definitions. So I think we should first understand exactly what the words practical and manifestation mean. Thank you. I will answer. That. Something that is practical means actively engaged in. We're doing something, but, you know, uh, versus thinking or talking about. It. Okay, so practical means you're doing something. Like walking in a Physi walk. Physically doing it. Okay. Physically performing something. Okay. Okay? All right. Uh, action versus discussion or vision. Uh, because if it's still a vision or you're still thinking or, or talking about it, it's not practical yet. You haven't put it into practice. A manifestation is an evident display of something that is easily perceived and under understood by our five senses. Five senses. Either we can see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, or all five. I believe that a Christian's faith should be a practical manifestation. You know? Uh, you know what I mean? Yep, I got it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. And if you got have James 2, 14 through 25, oh, go ahead. Oh, I had it. There it is again. Good. Okay. 14 through 25? Yep. Okay, I think it's 14, I'm sorry. Best. Okay. What don't what doeth I don't know this is uh something I don't read or think. What, what doeth it like profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute. Thank you very much. Of uh, daily food, don't go away. And one of you say unto them. Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled. Warmed, I'm sorry. Warmed and filled, not warned. Warmed and filled. Nothing withstanding, is that what it says, Brian? Not, notwithstanding. Not, thank you. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to. Come on, get up. Dad, give it. It does the same. <laughs> I'm not using this. You gotta get something that's bigger, not bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Is this the is this the version that I have? No. This is the version you have. Yeah, this is the version you have. Very good, thank you. Good. Where was I? <laughs> Go and see keep just, warm and well fed. How just, about that? Just start yeah. from the beginning and read it all over again. All right. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith aid them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Yeah, and that's for sure. Mm -hmm. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. we don't that's, it. Yeah, that's it. That brought to mind for me is I think we've all, or okay, I'll just speak for myself, yeah. have seen someone in need, 
and maybe been on my way to somewhere or had something else going on and, and I just said I will pray for you yeah and kept going and you know those are opportunities like Walt has talked about before I and I may at times even forget to pray for him or I'll, you, oh, I'll yeah. throw up a quick one Lord right help. just a little couple words and I was just talking about yeah. it to myself Lord this help. morning on that yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, I watch. Mm -hmm. I think that when you, when you have an opportunity like that, and you do something with that opportunity, you're, manif you're practically manifesting something into yes. it. And you're allowing God to do something there mm -hmm. because you stepped right out, like it says on the t-shirt. Yeah. God won't drive a parked car. You know, He's mm -hmm. given you an opportunity. He will work with you when you take mm -hmm. advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. One that... Do oh. Good. Yeah, do something song. That's good. Time for us to do. What was that, Terry? So that it makes me think of the do something song. Oh. Yeah, there's a, a song they've been playing on Caleb. It says oh. time oh, for yes, us yes, to yes. do something. Yes. We played that at but, the breakthrough. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. At breakthrough. Yeah. Absolutely. I was uh, thinking that when we have the opportunity like that, that instead of sending up a prayer to help them using that prayer to ask God how we can let him work through us for them. Yeah. What do you want me to do to influence the yes. situation yeah. that guy is in? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Charles Stanley said something yesterday that really impacted me. It was a very simple statement, but it stopped me in my tracks. He said, nothing on earth happens right. unless it was prayed for. And I, it stopped me in my tracks, and I thought, what? <laughs> Nothing happens unless somebody prays right. for it. So that kind of made me really stop and think. And that's a deeper subject than we've got time for. But my whole point is, yeah. when you pray for something, something happens. Yeah, yeah it's just like, okay, push. Can, I get, can, I, can I use yes. that you, you for an example of what yeah. she just said? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. I don't care. Before you got healed. Yeah. Before that person talked to you and practically had to drag you down there to get you. Right. Right. Not a believer. Oh, Guess no. what? That person was praying for you. Yes. Yeah, I know she yeah. yeah. And God answered that prayer. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. That's, oh, yeah. that's kind of what you just said, right? Hey, yeah. You want to say something too? Nope. That's okay. what that's good. Okay. Faith and repentance for a Christian is described as and requires action. Both those. Faith and repentance both. Yeah. Always working to advance the kingdom because you're always, that's what you should always be doing. Working to advance the kingdom. So we got three verses, two verses next. Romans 10, 17. I'll get that one. And Matthew 10, 7 and 8. Yep. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. 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 Faith is a good, faith is required. Yes. Strong faith. Matthew 10, yeah. 7 and 8. Yes. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. I kind of like the Matthew message right after the Romans message because they both go together like this. Mm -hmm. Because one tells you what, what faith, is, faith is and how you, how you receive it. And the other one tells you what to do with it. How to yeah. apply it. It's, have a plot. Uh, it makes me think also, it's not a direct quote, but it's in Revelations, it talks about, you know, the testimonies. Well, oh yeah, I remember now. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. It's what you hear God has moved in one person's life will give you the path of faith to believe that it can be for you too. Yeah. You know, one, one man's testimony is another man's prophecy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly what, God what God did for another, he fully intends to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That happens to me twice this week. I was talking to a nurse on the phone, and I happened to give her my testimony of being healed of cancer, stage four. And then this morning, at the, getting the test down there, I was able to witness to that lady, gave her the EKG. Mm -hmm. She got me go, she says, keep me in your prayers, and I'll keep you in mine. <laughs> it, it, it yeah, opens yeah, doors. Yeah. Yes, it does. It, I must have shared that testimony, I'm going to say 15 times this month alone. Awesome. But Great. it's for people with cancer. Yeah. You know, that think they have no hope. Oh, you know what that is? That's an expression of yours. It's all about love. Yeah. And, and that's what you showed this woman. Yeah. Or this yeah, person. Definitely. Was it a woman? 
that was getting the test, the EKG test? Um, the nurse? Oh. I don't remember. Her Whoever name. you prayed for. Um, I don't know if she was doing the EKG. Yes, it was a woman. It was a woman, okay. Judy was getting uh, She's somebody EKG. new that she's only been up here about six months. She's not ready. Okay. She was the technician. As we practice our faith, and as a new creation in Jesus Christ, which we are, and once we accept the Jesus, our repentance will ultimately display by word and deed the truth of our motives and our beliefs. Yes. Just like you can't you can't get away from it. You either either you're either honest and you, and you really uh, are doing this in a in a truthful way or not. It's going to show up just like black and white. This can also be called practical manifestation because you're going to manifest if it's the truth. And if you are in reality doing uh, a, a true believer, it's going to show it in a practical manifestation. If it's not, there, it won't be. There won't be a manifestation, not a true manifestation, I don't think. You know, it just came to my mind. What? Whoever you follow, you'll manifest. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's true. That's a good one. Did you hear that? Whoever you follow is who you will manifest. Okay. Yeah, we'll be a t-shirt. Okay. The, uh, your friends are. Yes. Exactly. The next verse is John 8, 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Okay. John 8. Um, I guess I can get it. I okay. Got it. I mean. Uh, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth Which shall says, make you free. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. That one. Yeah, that's good. I like that yeah. one too. That's, that's, that's a true definition of freedom. Yeah. Uh, Jesus as our role model and example, the one we are called to emulate, was a living example of practical manifestations during his short time on earth. Today, his power is displayed and manifested through believers, us. He gave us this power and authority in scriptures just by asking in his name. You all believe that? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. you all agree with that? Oh yeah. Okay, John, read John 14, 12 through 14. Terry Sue's got that one. While she's looking that up real quick, yeah. Uh, I would like to share the, the word free in that. Yeah. Is, uh, it's really hard to pronounce in the Greek. Eleutero El or something oh, yeah. to that effect. Yeah. But um, it's to exempt from moral, ceremonial, or mortal liability to deliver. In other words, whatever debt you had is cleared because you are free. Moral or other. You are set free. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Physical, moral, that's or legal. That's sin or anything. It's just. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't well. care if you were born with a problem. <laughs> you know, you, you were born with a heart defect. Well, yeah. God can set you free from that too. That's mm -hmm. right. That's huh. right. Yeah. Amen. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ready, Terry Sue? Yep. Okay. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, mm -hmm. and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. Yes. That's our authority right there. Yes. there it and it's very clear. It's not us yeah. that do it. We don't have to worry about, well, I'm really not holy enough to heal somebody. <laughs> That's <laughs> not what it's about. That's That's right. Right. We just point, trust Brian. in the one who is. I was right. about that this morning. I watched my uh, Pat was talking about that. Uh -huh. yep. well, I, yesterday he was talking like I'm behind it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, this is a question. Maybe not necessarily for this group, but it's a question. Do we use this authority as he desired, and to our to the our world's benefit and his glory. Yes. We need to. Yes, yes. we need to do more. To tell you the truth. But, but that's. <laughs> I was that's, at the post office, and I was just going to ask you guys. This girl walked by me limping. Yeah. Right. And in my head, I go, "Well, I can pray for her, or I can give her one of her little things and invite her to here." So I grab one of the things, and she took off the car so fast, and I didn't have time to get out of the car. Fast <laughs> and I go, "Did I miss one?" 
<laughs> and I went in and got my mail. Like, oh, did I miss one? That's when, you, that's, when, that's when you can do the second choice is pray for us. Yeah. yeah. I did. Because God did saw it right too. Well, I did right away. I just prayed for that girl. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was a quick one, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, are we supposed to do more of them? Can do. Can yeah. do. You, There's you, no supports to because that associates okay. with guilt if you don't. Right. Okay. And legalism. Yeah. And putting a uh, formula to it. Yeah. God can do it any way He chooses. Yeah. And the best thing you can do is just be ready, be supple, yeah. be al just allow God to float. One time He'll heal by putting mud in your eyes, and the next time He'll tell you to go wash in the fountain, and it's the same kind of healing. Yeah, okay. it's, not, it's not always going to be the same. Yeah, be, flex <laughs> be flexible, or, like He said. So, Romans 10, 14 and 15. Um, oh, OT, do you that? I'm trying, okay. I can't get it done in okay. my uh, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Mm. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Yes. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Yeah. Right. Bring the good news. That's our directive right there. Yeah. yeah. There's a song in that. I, I get what is it called? Beautiful feet. Oh, yes. so you have beautiful feet, beautiful feet, <laughs> beautiful, truthful feet, tried and truthful feet, meatiful, beautiful. Do you have beautiful feet? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have beautiful feet? Oh, oh she feet, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I thought so. But you see, in John, in, in John 14, 12 to 14, gives us the authority. Romans 10, 14 through 15, it, it gives us the, uh, the directive of what, yes. what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't. Anyway, this, ex this requires extreme faith and belief beyond any doubt. Yes. And that's what is, that's what is a difficult thing for a lot of people to reach. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't so difficult, there'd be a lot of more of us healing people and doing all the other signs mm -hmm. and wonders and stuff that uh, it's, it's a difficult point to reach. Do we have the desire and ability to do this? Yes. We have, I have the desire. I'm still working on the ability. <laughs> no, you have the ability. You just got to I have, have the desire. Mm -hmm. And I'm still manifesting the, the, the ability. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that many don't. Many of us appear to walk and talk the word, but how many of us can actually testify to practical manifestations that can be attributed solely to and through the power and authority of triune God. Yeah. <laughs> Another word for these manifestations would be testimonies. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Testimonies. You got a testimony. You oh, yeah. know the power. Oh, I know the power. You know the power. Right. You, power. you have without a doubt. Yeah. I know. The, uh, the, the knowledge that 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 God is real and God can heal. Yes. And so does a lot of other people. So does. I know. Uh, I got this. I do. That's why I'm here. So does, uh, so does Terry Sue, so does Brian, yep. I mean, uh, so does Judy. I mean, almost everybody here has had a miracle done in their life. Oh, yeah. big time. Yeah. Big time. We really? all have, every single one of them. Huge. Well, yeah, one of the greatest miracles was God taking the veil away from my eyes at the point when I was searching so hard to find signs, miracles, and wonders, uh -huh. and realizing that they were everywhere yeah. I looked. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> open my eyes without seeing signs, yeah. miracles, and wonders. Yeah. They're everywhere. Every color of the leaves, every yes. flutter of the bird, every person breathing air, every. And all you have to do <coughs> is because you open your eyes and you can see a miracle right in yes. front of you and you're watching. Yes. Isn't amazing? Absolutely. Yeah. And vice versa. If you, if you want to see a miracle, be a miracle. There you go. <laughs> Brian's got Walter. Brian's got Isaiah, and Terry Sue has First John. So uh, OT would be Hebrews 13, 5 and six. Oh, I'm going to Hebrews now. You got me doing Isaiah. Well. No. I'm looking up Isaiah. Who's, 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 who's doing Isaiah? I got Isaiah. Okay, okay I'll do it. What, what do I got? You got Hebrews 13. Okay. Okay, 13. Five and six. Five and six. Come okay, on. On, now this, this verse in the uh, New King James Version really spoke to me. No, you have NIV, you do not have New King James. I do? Yes. Okay, NIV. This really spoke to me exactly what it said. And, and, some, and it might be a little difficult. Sharon says she didn't understand exactly when she first read it how it applied. 
what we just got through saying about extreme faith and, and manifestations would be testimonies of that, but let's go ahead and read it, okay? <coughs> okay. All the and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. What's my name, Sean? Yeah, he wrote. Now, anybody want to make a comment on that? On that? Yeah. How it spoke to yeah. you? Well, that's very much asking God to lead us in every step of every day. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I did that all the time, and I don't, mm -hmm. I will admit that. But there have been times when I've asked for specific direction and got specific direction, yes. and it manifested just the way God showed it to me. Yeah. In, in, I don't know if I shared with you, I was picking somebody up hitchhiking, and she, he showed me the night before who I was going to pick up, where I was going to pick them up, and huh. and that it was going to be a powerful moment for both of us. That Ooh. God was just going to flow in that, yeah. and it was all of that. It, and He just showed all that to me in advance, and it all happened the very next day. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Awesome. That's what I <laughs> and I would like to say I always walked in it that way. I know that I could be walking in it better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> that means we all have room for improvement. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. Get more. But I, like, I like the way that, the, and I agree with all that, I like the way that he says, uh, although the Lord gives you, they call it mine, the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, which means we're all going to have situations yeah. and problems. And, and it's not that the Lord can't stop them. He could, but he lets things happen to us. And that's, a, that's like a test for us because we live here, we can't, we can't just be walking around on a cloud all the time and never experience anything because Jesus experienced everything. Why shouldn't we? Yeah. And uh, but then That's he said, your teachers will be hidden no more. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like right in this room here. We can go to anybody in this room, and we can get a word to, to help us. We can even make us for little children. That's you know? right. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes like Sharon said, the little children Absolutely. have exactly what you need for that particular time. You don't know. Well, we do know where it came from, mm -hmm. but yeah. you never expect it from, from somebody like that. You know, God gives you tests, and he doesn't grade your tests and say, here's your score. He gives you tests over and over and over and over again God until, you finally, yeah. until, you, pass, until yeah. you finally yeah. pass it. Until you finally pass it. Yeah, without doing something forms. crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. not pass fail, it's no. pass do over. Until you until you move forward into what it is that you were supposed to learn from that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I had that happen in ministry school. I um, <laughs> I blew a test, and he said, well, just do it over. And Ooh. the next time, I got an even a better score. Yay. The second good time. That's good. good, good, good. It well, makes me think of that story of the two oak trees. And one's in a sheltered valley, and one's on the cliff side mm -hmm. of the sea. And the one on the cliff side by the sea has got storms and wind blowing on it all its life, and its roots grow deep and strong and spread, oh, yeah. and it can't be blown over. But the one growing up in the middle of the field, it doesn't have a strong root system, and when a big wind does come, it just knocks it right over because yeah. there was no adver no adversity to strengthen it. Oh, okay. yeah, it's stronger. Yeah. That's oh, okay, good. that's a good word, yeah. Ryan. Like yeah. There you go. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like where it says. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, because we have, we have, if we're surrounded by people, if you're in the Word and you're a believer and you're surrounded by people, mm -hmm. and I even believe that if you're not necessarily in the Word and believer, there's always going to be something mm -hmm. that's going to be, you've got to know the difference, because yes. God put it in our hearts and in our minds. You know, whether you're a believer or not, put it in everybody's heart and mind. But you've got to know the difference between right and wrong. Right. And truth okay, yeah. and, and untruth. And God has said does that. And there's always going to be that, that <clears throat> word. Whether you take that advice or not, it's, you're going to know. When, right. Whether you make the choice to do it or not, it's to going to be right or wrong. But, yes. but, the, but, the, but the right word is always going to say, this is the way, walk in. Yes. Yeah.
I like that a lot. I like this a lot. This, this verse six really spoke to me. Okay, Jesus didn't say that only some of us would do what he has been doing, right? He said that anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing, and he will do even he or she yeah. will do even greater things than these. Yes. Yes. Now, is that John 14, 12 through 14, whatever it was? Yeah. So <laughs> that's good enough. We got it. So you, you, you didn't quite give him the next one if you gave him Hebrews. No. No. Okay. Terry's got this one. Okay. Terry Sue's got First John. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna read after this little sentence. I'm guessing that's it. Because there is so much doubt, fear, and insecurity in this natural world, and it is a roadblock to experiencing the practical manifestations that are common practice in the supernatural realm. Right? Yes. Yeah. Now we have John, 1 John 4, 16 through 18. Okay. 1 John 4, 16 through, through 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, yes. and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Mm. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Mm -hmm. I like the right. last verse. Did you notice that you left off verse 18, Sharon? Pardon me? Uh, yeah, I just realized that. She kept okay. Reading. We need to live in love, trust, obedience, and belief that trying God is real and with us 100% of the time. Yeah. Yes. Because, uh, if, if we do love like he says, we, like he loves us, and if we learn how to do that, and I got that real good experience a couple times now about what that's like. In fact, as I'm writing a new thing, and the title of it's going to be, What is Love? And, I'm gonna, and it's going to be a book. It's not going to be a, a short message like this. It'll be a book, and, uh, and I think everybody's going to like it. It'll take me a long time to finish, but I'm going to do it. I'm already started, and, uh, and I'm going to write that off of the experiences that I've had. Yeah. And uh, and believe me, if you've had this experience, it's the most unforgettable thing. You'll know right then and there, everything is real. Everything that God is and does and says is real. Give an example of what that experience what was. Kind of like one of your experiences. It's 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 hard to to explain the experience, but uh, I was. Uh, one time I was just sitting on the computer in broad daylight, the other time it was at early in the morning, and it was about uh, probably close to a year apart between the two experiences, and uh, and God told me that he, he wanted me to write this thing on what is love, and then he kind of gave me the whole thing all over again, and uh, it was like, and I don't know if you can imagine this or not, it's like you're sitting there, and all of a sudden this very, not hot, not warm, just kind of in between, like somebody wraps this wet, warm, hot kind of blanket around you, completely around you. Yeah. And I mean, every, from the bottom of your toes to the top of your head, although you can still see and hear and everything, and it's just going to go right into your skin and right into all your organs and your body, and it's and it says love, and it's just you will. I guarantee you, you'll start crying because <laughs> I do. I was an and I don't cry time when that happened. Yeah, I mean, this oh, is, had to be once. And, and then he'll tell you, and he'll tell you, this is how I love you. Yeah. Through and and through. this is how I want you to Glory love me up. and everybody Glory else. Up. That's right. And it's a real difficult yeah, thing to do. Like you can love God like that. That's not hard. But to love everybody else, you. that's, 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 uh, that's difficult. It, it really is difficult to achieve. Love your enemies and those that despitefully use you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The real the real uh, issue is to see them as he sees them. I was just gonna say that. To see them as he sees them. Oh, yeah. yeah.
Okay. Through his eyes. He sees right. everybody as They are worthy really of his love. That he loves them right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. he doesn't see all the things they did, red or wrong. I mean, he knows they're there. Yeah. But he doesn't see that when he sees that, that body, that yeah. person. Yeah. He doesn't see any of that. He just sees that as one of his offspring, a potential child of God, an what, heir in the kingdom. Is the way we're supposed to do too, though, as we see people. Yeah. We see him as good people. Yes. Whether, whether they're doing bad or not, right. we right. pull out the Here, Here's the yeah. way that God That's showed our job. me. Mind the goal. Yeah, okay. The way, the way that he showed me was that the things that they do, the bad habits and things like that, those are the bondages that they're in that he wants to set them free from. Right, okay? right. That's what he sees. He sees these people being tormented right. and being lied to and stuck in the blindness of the lie they're under. And he wants them to be free more than anything in the world. His own little child, the child that he loves dearly, is under this bondage that he wants to, and that's how he wants us to see them. Yeah, right. To okay. see them as these precious children of God that are yeah. caught in this lie or caught in this. Mm -hmm. Like we were. <coughs> yeah. Same with us, right? We were exactly. Caught. We were caught in and this. And also, we did something for us. And, yes. And you know, and and not that, not that every person is going to come over to God. Yeah, I know. Not that every person is going to turn up to God, but he wants, wants to, but he wants you to give that person every single opportunity yes. you can possibly give yes. right, to do that. Right. To be, yeah. to be but also keeping in mind that the things that you were talking about, the things that they do, are not who they are. Right. Right. And that's yeah. really what, that's what helped me to finally get to that point. You can love, uh, love the person, not the sin. Yeah. You know. And the only way you can do that is to climb off of your judgment seat. Yes. Yes. There you go. You can't do it and be judging them. Right. right. I know Judy wanted to say something, too. Uh, the vision I had years ago about being out in the wheat field and that Jesus was sitting at a table, just looking at his eyes, that people say, was there food on the table? I, I don't know. All I could see was what you're saying. Everything that about me and about everything, the world, I would seen it all in his eyes. It was like his eyes were talking to me. Mm -hmm. oh, I've never yeah. seen anything like that in my mm -hmm. life. I, I couldn't. Then the, that voice, you know, the fields are ripe for harvest. Yeah. <laughs> but I've never seen such beautiful eyes in my life. Yeah. I can see life in the eyes. Okay, the last thing I said was we need to live, love, trust, them, be obedient, and believe. And we need to live in love, trust, obedience, and belief that triune God is willing with us 100% of the time. And now you read Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. Keep your life free from the love of money. And be content, this is a good one, with what you have. Yes. Because God has said, never will I leave you. Yes. Never will I forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Yes. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? That's right. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> what can man do to you? Man yeah. can't do a thing to you. No, he can't. No. And, and that doesn't even just... Uh, pertain to human beings, but uh, the physical, whether it be disease or sickness or injury or right. what have you, they they also pale in the royal yeah. majesty of Almighty. Well, I'm little proof of that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Okay. I have a hard time being content without water. Somebody can look up Galatians 5.22. I'm going to read the next sentence. Please, please, can I, can I, I'll, I'll. I love that one. Extreme faith will manifest in the reality of, of peace, joy, hope, and in kingdom building, which is what we're going to be doing when we live in that peace, joy, and hope. We can be assured of this when the fruit of the Spirit is obvious to us, to everyone around us. Yeah. And that fruit of the Spirit is... Galatians 5.22. Yay! Oh, that's mine. Yes, <laughs> well, the two, yeah. I know the two of you could recite it together. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I haven't recited it for a while. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Right. <laughs> I mean, there wouldn't have to be a law made in this world, a human law, if everybody was like this. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't need it. No, they wouldn't. No. They wouldn't now, why can't we teach something like that in public school? 
Duh. We're working on that. Yeah, we are. Believe it or not, we are. We're working on yeah. it right now. Right I mean, now, we are. Can, how can they say that would be wrong? You know? <laughs> say nothing about your government. You know, do yeah. you, Daniel? Yeah. Right, Joseph. Okay. It seems that oftentimes Christians with good intent become overconfident and self-sufficient or self-reliant and are unintentionally drawn back into the natural world. It is difficult enough to decide to step out of this natural world initially, mm -hmm. and many times more difficult on the return trip. Yeah. Yes. Because you're full of shame and guilt. Yeah. And shame and guilt's a bad thing. It shouldn't happen. Unpack your bags. God canceled your guilt trip. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Although it doesn't have to be, it can be accomplished because God is the God of many second chances. Mm -hmm. yeah. He loves us unconditionally. The relationship with trying God means he is always with us and should always be included and consulted in all our decisions. Yes. In everything we think or do, pray for our from our position of victory over our enemy without ceasing. Yeah. Yes. Hey, without ceasing. Yeah. That old man in Tennessee always been telling me that for years. Yeah. Okay, Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. I got that. Okay. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend under the prayer that is made in this place. <laughs> yeah. Is that good or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's always lifting his eyes real. Yeah. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. Rejoice always, pray continually, yeah. give thanks in all circumstances. This is what got me going, I always do that now. Yeah. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, uh -huh. but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's a song in that one, too. Well, I'd have to tell you, she was like, oh, I'm pretty well. <laughs> Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. First Peter 5, so 10, right. and 11. I've got that one. Okay. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will he will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, yes. and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. 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 Yeah. How can you go wrong with that? No, I can't. Can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. He will restore us. Okay. The signs, miracles, and wonders that manifest to us are from triune God. Yes, we all know that God wants us to obey, trust, and unconditionally believe and love Him, right? Mm -hmm. All that is a given and requires extreme faith. However, are these core principles required to experience practical manifestations? Yeah, I just, I mean, you all know what a practical manifestation is. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Okay. Because it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Oh, here's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I say, yes okay. and no. <laughs> we can't put God in a box and predict or dictate how he will reveal himself. He will bring people to the knowledge of him in whatever way he chooses, in whatever situation, circumstance, or developmental stage that he deems appropriate. Just like he did with you. Yeah. Before you were even a Christian. Right. Okay, but you weren't a believer when you got healed. That's right. No. But that was a practical manifestation of God's power and glory, right? Well, yeah. Absolutely. Positively. Oh, absolutely. You cannot I'm say that he will not be found in that. Yeah. Okay, and I walked out yeah. of that. He made a believer out of OT. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, the next verse is Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. Right. Got so it. That. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not to the earth, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's that verse. That tells you right there, you know, that uh, he's going to do what, what his, whatever. His, his word, and I'm not, I know I'm using OT as an example, because I know more about his story, yes, sir. But uh, uh, that person that brought him, I think it was his girlfriend at the time, yeah. brought him. Uh, God was speaking through her, and He wanted her to do what He what He she He wanted her to do what she did with OT, bring her to bring him to that thing to be healed, and so that was the word out of His mouth through her for Him. Yes, which made Him a believer, and and if and if, and if, and if all believers could could. Uh, could, could witness and, and, and witness as strong as OT or you or Jerry Sue or Sharon or Judy and all, we all have different ways and different styles different methods but if they could all witness to that level of strength yeah I mean but they don't yeah. you know they don't you missed a good verse but. well I don't know <laughs> I have to hear something right now just sorry it was Isaiah 55 8 through 11 you want me to read it real quick for you yeah go ahead okay. for my thoughts are not your thoughts it's God's speaking I heard Brian say this did you hear it all? No, well, I heard that part. <laughs> then I say I walked away. Neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Oh, definitely. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void right. or empty. Mine says empty, but I like the word void better. But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Okay. Sure. Okay, yeah. thank you. And that's what, uh, that kind of fits right in line with uh, what we just read about Science Miracle and Wonders is right above that. So, because you guys can choose every situation he wants. And I was using that lady that brought you to the, to the tent meeting, wherever it was. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. You know, God told her, she told you. Yeah. If she brought you, you were healed. Oh, yeah. You weren't even a believer, but you were healed. Right. And that's the way it works. That's why I tell people, I'm a drug addict. God does whatever I he wants. I was a drug addict when I got healed. With whoever he wants to do it. Okay. And look at the person you are today because yeah. of that. Right. And look at the people that you're influencing today because of that. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean. I know, I really, I know. He knew what he was doing, and it doesn't return void. Oh, so I wouldn't be here coming to your Bible study. Yeah. Okay, it's in my heart. Yeah. Okay. Many are the testimonies of people experiencing triune God through healing, dreams, visions, and other manifestations. They weren't believers before, although many of them are now. There you go. If we could all just experience his agape love for us just one time. That's it. We would all be convinced that he does exist. As believers and through practical manifestations, we understand this. Let's do this. Don't be weak, apprehensive, embarrassed, or afraid. Right. Listen to the Holy Spirit and lead someone to salvation, truth, freedom, and eternal life. Be the good news. And there's one verse left. You, you Pardon me? I think you should read that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read it. It's Romans 10, 8 through 13. <clears throat> and I love this passage. Mm -hmm. I love this passage. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. How simple, much simpler can you be, can yeah. be than that? For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith yes. and are saved. Yes. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile, the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yes. yes. Yeah. Love and peace. Amen. That's the word, Walter. That's the last yeah. word. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Walter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good word.